Walter Carter here with a Fender Jaguar. Probably go down in history for being a guitar with a 24 inch scale. And whether that's short or long or uh, in between, the advantages, disadvantages, the jury's still open on all of those issues. The short scale guitar dates back to the 1930s, if not earlier. Uh, Gibson had a few models that were marketed as three-quarter size guitars, and they had a, a scale length of 22 and three-quarter inches. The standard scale on Fenders, in the, starting in the 50s, was 25 and a half, and Gibson Les Pauls, Gibson Electrics, were 24 and three-quarters. So the short scale, the three-quarter scale, was a, typically a smaller guitar aimed at either beginners, uh, possibly, don't want to offend women, but possibly women, anyone with smaller hands. Uh, and they were popular enough that Gibson brought the idea over to the electric line in 1950 with a model called the ES-140, available at full depth and then as a thin line. So that was a fairly successful model. Gibson also did a three-quarter size Les Paul once that line got started in the 50s. But in 56, Fender jumped on the three-quarter size bandwagon and sort of outshorted Gibson by a quarter of an inch. So from 22 and three quarters, the, the Fender Music Master and Duo Sonic had a 22 and a half inch scale. So one quarter inch shorter. But in the meantime, Gibson introduced the Birdland model, named for Billy Bird and Hank Garland, who were jazz players. And the idea was that a shorter scale would allow jazz players to reach more esoteric chords. And to that end, the Birdland had a scale length of 23 and a half. So it was an inch longer than the, the Fender short scales and three quarters of an inch longer than Gibson's three quarter size. So the Birdland was associated with jazz and in some minds, the short scale might have been, not in the minds of the people at Fender, they introduced the Jazz Master in 58, aimed, obviously from the name of the model, aimed at a jazz market, and that had the standard Fender scale of 25 and a half inches. So we get to 1962. The Jaguar appears with a 24 inch scale, why? It's not fully explained. Uh, Richard Smith, in his book, Fender, The Sound Heard Around the World, uh, says that Leo Fender wanted to go after the Gibson crowd. So a shorter scale length would do that. Why he went even shorter than three quarters of an inch, is, of an inch shorter than the Gibson scale is unknown. Maybe he thought people would A, B, a Gibson and a Jaguar, not knowing that there was a slight difference in scale length and realize, boy, this thing's easier to play than the Gibson. You know, not only are the frets a little bit closer together, but the, the string tension is gonna be a little bit less on a shorter scale guitar. So this guitar comes out, it looks pretty much like the Jazzmaster. It's got the offset waist, the same trim, basically the same electronics package. Uh, two circuits. Uh, Fender's still, I guess, of the mindset that there's a lead sound and a rhythm sound, and that the rhythm sound is, is this pickup. So down here, you have standard controls, tone and volume. Uh, that's a tone cut, and then just on off for the, for the two pickups here. This just switches the circuit from down here to up here and you have a tone and volume again, but you only have the so-called rhythm pickup, the neck pickup in that circuit. The modern Jaguar reissues have a different and more useful control arrangement, but, but this is what you had originally. <clears throat> the pickups you can see are a little narrower, more like Strat pickups than uh, the, the wider Jazzmaster pickups. The theory is that it would give it a little sharper tone, maybe more remindful or closer to Gibson humbucking sound than, than to uh, the single coil Jazzmaster sound. So who is this guitar aimed for? 
The first ads say it has unmatched versatility, although you could argue that a, a three pickup Stratocaster would be more versatile, even though uh, the Strat would still have the three-way switch and not the five-way yet. Uh, the ads also said it has captured the attention of professional musicians everywhere. Well, they would be hard to find, really. The most prominent person to play a Jaguar was Carl Wilson in the Beach Boys. And they appear occasionally in pictures with other surf bands. But for the most part, no professional musicians didn't pick up a Jaguar, and, and nor did non-professionals. The, the main problem might have been the price. This was Fender's most expensive guitar at the time, $379.50 for a Jaguar. Uh, by comparison, the, the Jazzmaster was 30 bucks cheaper at $349.50. A Strat was $120 cheaper. So this guitar you know, had a hard time out of the gate just based on price and on the perception that it's, it's better than a Jazzmaster. The ads, early ads also uh, promoted that idea by showing this Jaguar with the Jaguar automobile and not just the sedan but the E-Series uh, like the XKE which was quite a modernistic and, and uh, you know a hot car from in that period. This particular example is from 64. It shows Fender custom colors which were becoming popular at the time and it helped a lot of Jaguars and Jazzmasters had custom colors, but it was available. They were available in Strats and Tellys as well, and typically with the matching headstock color. This model has the original dot inlays with an, on an unbound board. Uh, in 65 and 66, that was upgraded to block inlays and a bound board on the Jazzmaster as well as the Jaguar. Didn't really help. Jaguar went out of production around 1975, uh, right about the time punk music was starting. So what's the perfect guitar for, for punk rockers? It's something that nobody plays anymore. If anything, it would be an affront to, to some of the older people who remember this as a surf guitar uh, to have some kids thrashing away on it. So it, it became a, an emblem to some degree of punk rock particularly in the hands of Kurt Cobain. So Fender finally in 1996 reissues the Jaguar as well as the Jazzmaster in a Japanese model and then in 2000 in a US made model and it's still in, in production now and doing probably better than it did originally. The jury I think is still out on the 24 inch scale I can tell you a, a market they probably didn't think about is, is aging musicians as the hands get a little stiffer and the attitude that you just don't want to work that hard to play guitar anymore kicks in. This guitar feels really comfortable. I mean, don't tell anybody, but this, this is like the, the Fender for seniors. Jaguar, the senior guitar. If you're a Fender watching in, no charge for the marketing tip.